So good afternoon once more. Haribuni sana. My name is Joy Katunde. For those of you who are joining us or Joy Mateka, depends on how you know me. I'll be your moderator for the day. So I'd like us to start the word of prayer from our secretariat, Clement. Can you lead us with a word of prayer as we begin our meeting? I pray, Almighty Father, we are gathered here virtually to have our sensitization with webinar on the Children Act. Guide us through our deliberations and uh, guide us and be with us and protect us even beyond this webinar. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for the people who made time to um, come and join us today, this afternoon. As we go and discuss, we'll be discussing a very interesting topic, the intersex child in Kenya. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to give uh, the apologies from our chairperson, Madam Helen Namisi. Uh, she was hoping to be with us. And uh, as always, she's always interested and always um, taking part in such webinars. But unfortunately, she's been held up work-related matters, serving the branch, and um, she passed it uh, her regards to you. So about the branch, the branch uh, covers uh, Nairobi County, Kiambu County, and more recently Wajia County. You'll wonder why Wajia is not connected to Nairobi or um, Kiambu in any way. But a lot of advocates who practice in Nairobi, I mean, the advocates who practice in Wajia County are the same advocates who practice in Nairobi and Kiambu. And for that reason, our jurisdiction was extended to Wajia County. So we look at matters um, practice. We also look into the welfare of uh, advocates in these two counties, and more importantly, uh, member participation. So in the same spirit, uh, we've been having webinars over the past uh, few, should I say, over the past few months, they intensified over the COVID period where contact had been minimized and now we had to make use of this platform. So we've been having webinars the last one that we had uh, was on children, uh, the Children Act, where we were just looking at what, what's the new thing that has come with the Children Act. And if you can recall, we had a highlight that really mentioned and went down, well, not expansively, but we did mention about um, the new provisions uh, on the, the intersex child, which has been lacking, or rather which was missing in the former um, children, children Act 20. Yeah, the Children Act, the former Children Act. So today we are joined by uh, Senior Counsel Chigiti, who I am going to introduce. This is quite brief compared to what I know. There's so much more. I can tell you freely. Go Google. You learn more about him if you do not try again. Um, kindly mute if you're not um, speaking or asking. Okay, so. I will go through, this is very brief. I can assure you this is very brief. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, he is a partner in the firm of Chigiti and Chigiti Advocates with uh, 22 years post-admission experience. Uh, he is a counsel at the International Sorry, Joy, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just, I mean, you can't afford to miss out on this. So I'll start from where I began. So Senior Counsel John Chigiti is a partner in the firm of Chigiti and Chigiti Advocate with 22 years post-admission experience. He is a counsel at the International Criminal Court, that is the ICC and the African Court. He's a director of the Legal Resources Foundation, LRF, and a certified professional mediator. His areas of practice are family law, pro bono work, public interest litigation, and human rights cases, including intersex persons, informal settlements uh, and housing, marginalized and minority groups, and the rights of persons with disabilities, statelessness, refugees, the environment, and prisoners. Um, He's won the Pro Bono Lawyer of the Year Award from Amnesty International. 
did they get that right? Pro Bono Lawyer of the Year Awards from Amnesty International LSK. This is the Nairobi Lawyers Award, the Cradle and Kitua Chasheria. He was a lecturer at Kenya School of Law since uh, the year 2014 to 2019. A lot of us have been uh, privileged to attend his classes. He's an, a trial advocacy trainer and a director of the Trial Advocacy um, Training Institute. He offers mentorship at Strathmore University and the Advanced Mentorship Counseling and Mediation Limited, ANC. He is the author of the book, Intersex Persons and the Law in Kenya, currently writing family law talks and the client and the lawyer, uh, lawyer books. He's a director at the Rotary Club and plays the saxophone with the Nairobi Lawyers Music Band. So I told you this is just very brief. You can Google up and find out more. So um, joining, join me in welcoming him as we um, listen in and learn. And I'd encourage you to ask questions uh, using our chat box that are going to be addressed uh, at the end of the session. So for those of us who keep asking whether the slides will be shared, we always stream live on our Facebook pages and also on the YouTube page. So you can always catch up on whatever you could have missed and also share with your colleagues. So Karibu Sana Stimia Trigiti. Thank you. How hard is, it is to do the sign language. But I made it. Thank you very much, Joy, for the introduction. Signal me if I'm not audible so that I don't speak to nobody. Thank you. To all the guests in our county, in our country, internationally, it is indeed great honor to speak to you today on this very dear topic, this delicate, lovely topic that is touching on intersex children. I want to acknowledge the presence of an intersex person named as James Karanja, a Kenyan, who if the society will allow, will say hi to us at some point. The subject of the day is not an easy one, but it's about humanity. It's about creation, it's about equality, dignity and rights. When we started this conversation way back in 2007, I had the honor and the pleasure of interacting with a person known as RM, an intersex person, we ended up in court under the repealed constitution where we were trying to assert their rights as intersex persons. We were trying to propel rights through the court, an uphill task through a constitution that did not provide for rights, nor provide for discrimination, for intersex persons. We moved under public interest litigation uh, dimensions that generated a lot of awareness around the subject. But it wasn't to be what we wanted it to look like. We ourselves did not really truly appreciate this subject. Luckily, another child was growing as we were coming to close with the litigation of RM. And this child 
was then to be known as Baby A. Baby A became an interesting child to all of us because we were able to move to court. We were able to litigate in a petition number 266 of 2013, wherein we persuaded the court to issue certain interdicts, certain orders that are important for us to understand so that we are then going to be able to appreciate why we are smiling today like those lovely intersex children. In that petition, we were telling the judge to deliver the child and other intersex children from the slavery, from the cage of invisibility. We were telling the judge that indeed we have a law in Kenya known as a Parsons, or rather the Births and Deaths Registrations Act, which under section seven stipulated that it was upon the registrar of persons to enter the name and other particulars of children born within Kenya. And we were telling, or rather we told the judge that that act made another provision in section two, which says that whenever an intersex child is born, the parents have to indicate and or tell the registrar of persons the sex of this child. And our story with the judge was very simple. So we thought, we were telling the judge that since intersex children cannot fit into the provisions of the Births and Deaths Registrations Act, intersex children like baby A were victims of indirect discrimination to the extent that they could not acquire birth certificates so that the Births and Deaths Registrations Act only took care of boys and girls, men and children, but did not consider the existence of this wonderful creation in the intersex children. What was different in this petition was that our petition was within the space of the Constitution 2010, where the judiciary under the Chapter 10 organs platform had more leeway. We had the Bill of Rights, which we have today when we were litigating the BA, unlike RN's era. So the judge was very proactive, Justice Lenaola, Supreme Court judge. He embraced our argument and made a direction that baby A be issued with a birth certificate. I smiled when I read the judgment because I knew we were walking in the direction where yes, we were going to get the birth certificate, but it was going to be the wrong entry because baby A was not a boy, was not a girl, and the law, the Births and Deaths Registrations Act only provided for boy and girl. However, we moved. Great success in the judgment because we got a lot of other wonderful interdicts. Inter alia, the judge directed that the, the AG generates data of all intersex persons in Kenya. In the petition, we were also telling the judge that these children not only lack legal recognition, they are suffering as victims of unwanted surgeries. The surgeries are being conducted without a legislative platform, no regulations, no rules. And I remember us telling the judge that it's like experiments, experiments being conducted on a human body. We felt pain for these uh, children because their autonomy 
their bodily integrity was being violated. They were suffering from loss of dignity. They suffered log, uh, loss of you know, selfness. And ultimately we were saying that there was a need to bring change so that these children could enjoy equality, could enjoy an, a space without discrimination, a free space where they would live and enjoy the benefits of being a human being like the rest of us. Indeed, amongst other things that we were telling the judge in the petition, was that indeed these children suffer from the violation of their rights to health and education. You'll appreciate without a bad certificate, entering to a classroom is an uphill task. They only get their, themselves in the classroom through deception, through lies. And we asked ourselves, do we have second-hand citizens in Kenya? We again smile because come July 2022 fast track. In the spirit of promoting the right to family, in the spirit of progressive realization through the public participation, through inclusion, through promoting the promise that we have in the preamble to, uh, to promote, build, nurture the person, the individual. The lawmakers came up with the Children Act 2022. An amazing statute. I still can't believe what I am reading, that we have a law in Kenya that has given us a definition of what an intersex person is. Before this, we had the Persons Deprived of Liberty Act. I remember us walking into parliament, asking the parliamentarians, why is it that you only recognize intersex persons when they're in conflict with the law? We didn't know what was coming. They shed tears. They have given us a legislation that is defining an intersex person. According to the act, and I cry out to you, if you embrace the definition, you're home and dry. According to the act, an intersex child means a child with a congenital condition in which the biological sex characteristics cannot be exclusively categorized in the common binary of female or male due to inherent and mixed anatomical, hormonal, gonadal, and chromosomal patterns, which could be apparent prior to, at birth, in childhood, puberty, or adulthood. What a rich definition. The definition we had in the Persons Deprived of Liberty Act 2014 was very shallow, very, very shallow. Before that, we had no definition, save for what the judges had given us in RM's case. Here we are, light years ahead, ahead of many continents, with a definition of an intersex child. The definition looks very rich. It is indeed rich. It looks like a very uh, small entry, but for those who want to grow in appreciating the intersex child, I call upon you to understand this definition. It's very explosive. A child who is born with a inherent, inbuilt condition. Could be the hair, could be the gonads, could be the muscle formation, could be the chromosomal pattern, could be the hormones, could be your voice, all that. So you're being told, unlike the definition and characteristics of a boy or a, ma or a, or a girl, 
the intersex person sex characteristics are different. They are born that way. And they are pattern anatomically, hormonal, gonadal, chromosomal is different from what you have, from what a boy has, from what a girl has. You might look at somebody and think they're intersex. Do not conclude. You have to dig in into this very broad definition. Please appreciate it. I know you're here because you are a person who is progressive minded, a person who believes in equality, a person who believes in rights. Appreciate this definition because whether you're a social worker, whether you're a lawyer, a medical practitioner, a parent, this definition is everything. This is where the insulation, the protections, that are then rolled out in the act, flow from. You might find yourself in court with a child in need of care and protection. You might find yourself with a client who is in need of all those rights around the child. If you do not understand the definition of an intersex child, you shall not advance. So for me, this is a great celebration that we have a statute in Kenya that gives us a definition of who an intersex person is. It's not enough. Remember we said we suffered mischief because of the births and deaths registration act. Section seven of this children act then tells us, every child has a right to be registered in the births and deaths register immediately after birth in accordance to the act known as the births and deaths registration act so the act is compelling giving an order telling the registrar under section 73 that the principal registrar shall make or take necessary measures to ensure that correct documentation and registration of intersex children is done at birth. So we are seeing a situation where intersex children or persons will no longer be walking around without documentation. The principal registrar has a duty, has been told you have an obligation, not only to enter the names of these persons, but also to correct documents. We have a case in court today where we are struggling, telling the court to issue orders to correct, to rectify the names of the intersex child, to, co to connect with the status of the person because they've since moved on. You can see it's going to be a walkover. I cannot wait to be in court that day when I'll tell the judge that indeed our orders were granted by section seven of the Children Act. So remember, dear friend, the registrar has a duty to enter the names of these persons because they are a creation. The registrar has been directed to register, amend documents that will give these children a ticket into the classroom a ticket like a birth certificate that every other child has, a ticket to tell these children that you will have academic papers that connect and speak to who you are, a document that enables the intersex person to assert their rights, to fight for their position as they claim their space in the ballot box when they grow up a document that will enable them to get driving licenses, a document that will enable them to get employment, the list is endless. What a wonderful piece of legislation. The act does not end there. I thought we were done until I read section 21. It says an intersex child shall have the right to be treated with dignity and to be accorded appropriate medical treatment, 
special care, education, training, and consideration as a special need category in the social protection services scheme of things. Look at that. Section 21 is saying, we are connecting with the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, Article 1, which says, we are all born free and equal in rights and dignity. Section 21 is using that word. Connect with our constitution. Article 28, you can imagine a human being without dignity. These persons lived like that. Today, we can rejoice because Section 21 is categorical, expresses that position. We are again being told they must enjoy medical treatment. Right to health, Article 43, would be nothing for the intersex child. We are being told in Section 21 again that they need special care. They're entitled to education, training. Article 43 again, the right to education. We are saying now we must allow them into the classroom. We must give them a desk. They have an identity. They're entitled to the developmental needs like other children. The, the Children Act is connecting again with Article 20, uh, 43, 40, uh, 43 years. It's telling us we have to uphold, we have to promote the right to education of intersex children. Very critical. An intersex child who is educated is going to go places. They are going to occupy the corner offices. Why must they not occupy the nice jobs? Why must we keep chasing them from school? So the Children Act is saying, dear principal, dear teacher service commission, a time has come, it's a new dawn. When we say socioeconomic rights belong to these children. All of us and Article 3, Article 20, must promote, fulfill and ensure that the right to dignity, the right to education, and the right to social protection becomes a reality because these children have come of age. We had in the past situations where the surgeries were rolling out, like we said earlier, without any platform that would guide the process Surgeries that were not necessary on these innocent souls. Surgerization of their bodies, bodies, leaving them with scars, marks, emotional pain and agony in the hand of the blade of the doctor. We cried before Justice Lanaola. Today we are being told by the statute that indeed these children have protection in article two, in section 23 which reads section 23 1F of the Children Act. No person shall subject a child to accept with the advice of a medical genetist to organ change or removal in case of an intersex child. You're being told you must not touch. You must not change. You must not apply any artificial cosmetic surgeries on these children. Let them be. Section 23.2 is saying it's a crime. It has criminalized these kind of deeds and set out a punishment of 500,000 Kenya shillings fine or an imprisonment of not less than three years. So what was happening in the past? These children would be subjected to surgeries so as to modify their genitalia, to make them boys when they were intersex, to make them girls so as to fit into the space of girls. There was no guide, there was no structure in place so that most of those surgeries were backfiring because 
or we didn't have the structure to appreciate the actual need. You can imagine you have surgerized the physical genitalia of a child. You have not touched the chromosomal arrangement. You have not touched the genetical packaging of this child. You have not reached their primary sex characteristics. So that we are saying by physically removing their genitalia, modifying, changing, in quotes, improving, so as to enable them to fit into the societal binary space, you are now a criminal. You are now going to face the long arm of the law. You are going to get convicted and there is no turning back. I know the office of the DPP has read this provision, has set up a structure like it did with the FGM to try and bring this conversation of unnecessary surgeries to closure. That was not enough. I kept reading and I reached a section 64, no, section 26, three, which says, or speaks to the children in conflict with the law. It is a soft entry. It's not harsh. The reality is that these people can get into conflict with the law. However, unlike in the past, where they'll be bundled up into male prisons, female facilities, police stations, section 26 says, for children in conflict with the law, section 26.3 of the act provides that male, female, and intersex children deprived, deprived of liberty shall be accommodated in separate facilities. Section 64 then goes ahead to say that the Inspector General, the IG, shall establish child protection units in every police station for purposes of providing on a temporary basis a safe and non-threatening environment for children in conflict with the law. Goes ahead to say, the secretary may inspect children protection units established above in the various police stations to ascertain their compliance with the general standards prescribed for children institutions under this act or other written law. It finally says that the child, the child protection units established in the subsection one shall be dis, uh, desegregated by gender with clear sections for boys, girls, and children. Look at that. Whenever these people would find themselves in conflict with the law, they, end up, they would end up with a lot of problems in the police stations. Conflicts that would end up compounding into broader problems when it came to violation of their rights. They would fall in the hands of untrained officers. They would find themselves in a structure, a correctional facility, a police station where there are other inmates, male or female. It did not, it did not matter their gender. So that then, now we are being told that there are special units which are going to take care of these children. Section 95 of the same statute goes ahead to help the court in formulating and or coming up with a that does not compound nor expose these children again to more problems. It says that the court shall inter alia consider the needs of intersex children and even summon experts before issuing any orders in respect to children, these children. So you can see the magistrates, the judges who are interacting with these children are being told, you can reach out to experts. You can consider the special needs of these children before you issue any orders in whichever direction you shall then think or deem fit to uh, advance with. Section 144Z of the act again describes an intersex child as a child in need of care and protection. 
as a child, as one of the, uh, as an intersex child, and is subjected to, or likely to be subjected to discriminatory treatment or abuse. What is the beauty of section 144? 144 embraces the reality and appreciates that indeed intersex children are children in need of care and protection. You know what that means. They are treated with that care that they deserve because of their status. I read article 45 the other day because I love reading it. And when I read it, I read it with section 174, two of the new act. This is a space around adoption. I've been posting a lot of social media conversations every other day asking the legislator, can an, uh, can an intersex child be adopted? Asking the legislator, can an intersex adult adopt a boy or a girl? I got no answers. I knew the Children Act was strapped in a space that did not see through the prism, through the glass, the beauty of the intersex child. Section 1742 of the new act has come and brought out a structure which says that a single man shall not qualify to, post, to foster a female child under this part unless he is the father to a female child. Goes further to say, a single woman shall not qualify to foster a child who is male under this part, unless the child is her child. Then comes the nice entry, it says, the above restrictions shall not apply to a person who applies to be a foster parent for an intersex child. And all I can do is just but clap away and smile. When I realize how our national values and principles of governance as read alongside the cry for social justice and, and inclusion is embraced by these steps that the lawmaker has spoken to through these pieces, through the sections that are carried in the Children Act. 250, the last section of the act, leaves the child, places the child in a mechanism that is so powerful. I couldn't believe when I read section 250. When we went to court with baby A, like I started when I started doing my presentation, we had a big problem with section seven of the Births and Deaths Registrations Act. Remember we say the registrar because of the act is supposed to ask the mother to give the particulars of the child, one to the parent, one to the child who was born intersex under that regime. Under that colonial piece of legislation, the child could not fit because the particulars did not include the intersex particulars. So the section is saying, section 250 is saying that the act provides that section seven of the Births and Death Registrations Act is amended, I love that by inserting the following new subsection mid, immediately after subsection one, inserts the following. The registrar under subsection one shall include the details of an intersex child and an intersex person. What more do we want? We have achieved inclusion. The legislator has told the registrar that you shall include them you shall embrace these particulars, intersex child. And when I read this, I remembered a case we used from South Africa when we were doing RM's case. We were telling the judge, the judges, the three judges, that indeed what South Africa did was to introduce the definition of an intersex child in a piece of legislation. And that was then going to be read in, into the definition of sex when we were reading. Article 27, when we are saying discrimination is prohibited 
on the grounds of sex and other status. I see nothing less in this. Section 29 of the same act is amended in the section 250, sorry, section 29 of the Births and Deaths Registrations Act is amended by section 250 of this new magical statute, the Children's Act. It says, it is amending section 29 by inserting the following words immediately, immediately after the word documents. And it says under section 29, the minister, sorry, uh, let me read that again. I, yeah, it says section 29 of the Birth and Deaths Registration Act is amended by adding uh, paragraph D by inserting the word immediately after the word documents in, in quotes that shall include details of an intersex child or an intersex person. So section 29 again says, the Birth and Deaths Registration Act rules, uh, the minister may make rules which shall, uh, with regard, sorry, to the foregoing entries, which include the entries which will form the statutory forms of all the registers, the returns, and other documents required for purposes of registering these children. So the, 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 the registrar of persons has been told, you shall enter these particulars of these special children on an intersex children. And the act father says, we are not leaving you alone in the call, Mr. Registrar. Mr. Minister must make rules that shall generate the magical forms that will enable you, Mr. Registrar, Miss Registrar, to enter these details of these children. I must stop here. I must smile and return it to the Law Society. Thank you very much. Joy, back to you. Joy, back to you. Thank you very much. LSK. Joy has the capacity to speak when she's muted. Oh, great. Our same language worked. Thank you so much. Um, it has been a beautiful listening to you. You never would fail to learn a thing or two every time you listen to senior. So at this point, uh, I realized there were so many questions flowing in. And I'll take two or three. The first one is from... Um, Christina Wino, she says, um, senior counsel has referred to the initial stigma and dilemma that they sought to address in petition 266 of 2013 with regard to unregulated corrective surgeries and conversely, uh, violations leaving the children with scars. I applaud the great strides that were made to date. My concern, or rather Christine's concern, has uh, have there been have there been sufficiently sensitization um, so as to ensure, I think she meant, has there been uh, sensitization to ensure we do not have parents out there sneaking out, uh, sneaking and going for surgeries? Have the medics and all medical practitioners been sensitized on this progress in the law, such that they are able to advise parents accordingly when they visit their facilities for this purpose? Uh, then she had a second question or challenge. The other question or challenge would be, does the state have sufficient holding facilities for intersex children in conflict with the law? Her concern is um, specifically to police, prisons, approved schools, uh, etc. Have these people been sensitized? Over to you, Senior. Yes, um, thank you, Christine. Um, indeed, there's a lot of work to be done. We have just but scratched the surface. We had to begin somewhere. We are where we are. We 
started with litigation, the PIL RM went to baby A. And what the judge did in baby A was to direct the Honorable Attorney General to generate a task force that generated recommendations into earlier one was that uh, awareness creation campaigns must roll out. And indeed, I'm glad to say that that is happening. It's on top gear. We ask you to join that conversation. It's an open space. These children belong to all of us. Now that you have learned something, Ms. Owino, you become a foot soldier. You must tell those parents if you know them. And remember, these children are all over, everywhere in the counties. Tell them that indeed these are human beings now and they have a huge space that has been created by the lawmaker. We, I have also done my, my bit. I know I have a duty to uh, educate. I've done a, a book on intersex persons and the law. I'm crying out to you also, uh, do something in your own way so that we are saying there's progressive realization of the rights of these children. And just like a child who is born, we must give them the shoes. We must give them a desk. We must give them room. We must allow them to occupy their spaces. So that will only happen if we empower not only the citizens, but also the intersex persons themselves and the parents. Holding facilities, yes, we don't want them to be in the holding facilities. I think the art and the DPP policies on diversion are big on that. We shall uh, walk in that direction of discouraging these children um, from getting themselves in that space uh, being processed by the law. So yes, we don't have enough facilities. We struggled with RM's era where we we're telling the judge, the judge is that RM is intersex, cannot fit in a male nor the female outfit uh, platform. But uh, I believe the Department of Prisons, now there's a law that there's a law which we are discussing, uh, is going to have that conversation. And now that we have seen the judiciary is being told that you can consider factors and uh, uh, a lot of entries around the nature of the child. I believe since uh, it's um, a concerted effort, effort by all the players, the prisons, the judiciary, the lawmakers, uh, the lawyers, we are going to ensure that uh, the facilities are there. So that even if we are speaking to boarding schools, we want a school that has the space to reasonably accommodate intersex children so that they don't run away from school uh, because of lack of those facilities. And as I mentioned that, uh, Joy, with your permission, I have mentioned that we have an intersex person. I've seen there too now. I've seen uh, this James I have mentioned if you allow him to help me answer the second uh, bit of uh, the question around the, the schools and the facilities, I'll be very honored. He's called James Karanja. Joy, back to you with a special request. Um, thank you so much. I think those, those two questions have been addressed uh, well and sufficiently. Uh, maybe you can uh, side chat uh, on the, you can chat on the chat box. You can drop a chat on the chat box so that uh, the person in charge of muting and unmuting can do that the two who have been called out kindly do so, so that we can unmute you. Great. James Karanja, kindly, Clement, help out with that. And Sean Wall. Um, anyone comment? An easier way though will be unmuting everyone so that um, they get a chance to speak. Oh, great. I can see James Karanja has the mic on. Thank you. Thank you. Caribou, James. 
Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning um, to those people from outside the African continent. Um, thank you so much for the LSK uh, Nairobi branch for holding this conversation, because I think um, other than senior counsel John Chigiti, uh, we have not been able as intersex community to hold this communication in a forum which is not like a sex oriented space. So thank you so much for always uh, being with us. So um, since I'm in a legal space, I think I should introduce myself in the right way. I am Miru Idera, AKA James Karanja. I am an intersex person. I uh, was born and raised as a girl for the first uh, 17 years of my life uh, until you know, when I reached puberty and everything changed and the doctor realized that it was a mistake by assigning me a female identity. Um, however, I take uh, this opportunity uh, on behalf of the intersex community who were not able to be with him uh, this space to appreciate the role of the law and bring us and providing the dignity to people like us that, um, where you know we are like an epitome of where we tell people those things that you think are quote unquote normal to some of us they are presumed to be uh, 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 privileges for example it's not an easy thing for me to move from my house and go to an impressor um i need to provide a lot of documentations to prove that i am who uh, the law identified me as you know my first year of birth um, however, those things are changing, and thanks to um, Senior Counsel uh, Mr. Chigiti, who is a friend uh, to me as James, and also to the intersex community. Um, I just want to appreciate again the role that uh, you are bringing out this conversation, because even when it comes to you as lawyers, most of the time you you are not able to um, really, or you, you look at us at some point, you know, like, who are you? And at some point, you, you should feel challenged. But having these processes um, and taking these processes in the limelight, and especially within legal profession, in one way or another, it makes our life easier. So thank you again for hosting this uh, webinar. And we hope to have more people and more of these webinars to educate the intersex uh, or people on matters intersex people. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dean. Coming from you, it hits different. And uh, I love that you're able to compare the past, where we are, and even really hopeful of the future. I look forward to a space where we'll be discussing, having this discussion in whatever forum. Personally, I work in the child protection sector, and um, I'm really passionate about the topic. And um, I always encourage us, in, in as much as we discuss children issues. If you're discussing children and um, say elections, children and the internet space, children and um, disaster, always have in mind that there's this child who's more vulnerable than all the other children who um, you could be discussing. So thank you so much, James. And I don't know if uh, Sean, you're available, can we drop a chat so that you can be unmuted? We'd love to hear from you as well. Great. Oh, Sean can't speak. Unmute Sean. Um, Chigiti, it's so wonderful to see you after all these years. Um, I, I wasn't expecting to be on camera um, or to speak. So, um, yeah, I just want to first acknowledge um, the work of um, counsel, senior counsel Chigiti. Um, as well as the ongoing work of um, James Karanja, um, Ryan Mururi um, with the Intersex Persons Society of Kenya, um, as well as the larger sort of African intersex movement um, that has really 
pushed for change in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Uganda. Um, and I also want to lift up the work of Julius Kagwa, um, who is with SIPID in Uganda as well. Um, yeah, I think this has been really informational, and I think this has definitely been the culmination of advocacy over many years um, by Chigiti and um, the Intersex Persons Society of Kenya. Um, I visited Kenya in 2018. I was in Nairobi, um, so I was able to witness some of this work personally um, and have been very humbled um, by the work that has been done, um, and I think Kenya um, is really leading the continent on um, sort of intersex work um, and intersex legislation. So this, this legislation is just really powerful. Um, I'm an intersex activist um, originally from the States, from the US, um, currently getting an education, um, getting my PhD in England. Um, and I feel like, um, you know, Kenya, given um, that it's a former colony of um, the British Empire has gone well beyond anything that England could do to protect intersex children. Um, so I think we actually should be looking to Kenya, Uganda, and other countries in Africa to sort of lead us and inspire us around sort of intersex liberation and bodily autonomy for intersex children as well as adults. Um, so thank you, Chigiti. Thank you, Karanja. Um, thank you to all of the advocates on this call. Um, and I look forward to sort of witnessing the implementation of this law for the protection of intersex children and adults. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, taking your time to be with us and to speak to us. Profound words out there. Uh, the intentionality. Uh, can be seen uh, through legislature. A lot of times we talk about implementation being uh, a challenge, but I like to challenge us as well. Implementation starts with you. You've sat in, in this session for over one hour listening, learning, and learning, and relearning. So whatever much, whatever little that you've gotten from this session, it's up to us to cascade it to those who do not know anything because it all starts with us. It starts with you knowing something, and telling your colleague, telling your friend, and in your small ways, the word goes out there. So in the interest of time, I'd like to pick up um, another question. Um, this is from Sharon Mutua. She says, with respect to section 23.1a, male children and women is subjected to forced circumcision. We are led to the fact that consent of majority of is not all male children is never sought before circumcision. How do we tackle this situation? I'm trying to think about it, about the question in the context of intersex children. Then the council will allow, let me just take um, three questions at a go. Where is baby? This is a curiosity. <laughs> this is a curious person uh, who's asking, where is Ariam now? What happened to baby A? And uh, so the churches asked, um, I'm told, I could be wrong, that congenital disorders are better dealt with when a child is young. Perhaps this is where um, the parents of those children are coming from. If they are to, if they are to, if they're led to reach age of consent, it may turn out to be late, assuming that the person would want to undergo surgery. What's your comment on this? Yes. Um... Thank you very much. Um, circumcision. When we talk of these kind of issues around the genitalia of a human being, the bodily integrity rights questions come to fall. So that then you must appreciate the difficulty the parliamentarian is faced with when that kind of a question arises. What is the right age? At what age can we speak about this thing uh, around the surgeries? The first thing I would say is ask yourself the question. Why is the UN telling us to postpone the blade when it comes to intersex children? Why is the UN telling us today there's no, that there's no hurry? 
it's because we want to preserve the body, bodily autonomy of these children. They're not sick. They're not. Only in exceptional cases will you find the need for these surgeries. Why can't we accept them the way they are? Why not leave them to be? Why is our threshold of you know, accepting people who look different from us? They're harmless. All they're crying out for is love. So back to your question, I have no answer. In the Colombia, in Colombia, the Colombian uh, Constitutional Court, when these questions arose, the judges had to seek uh, the help of amici in doctors, lawmakers, counselors, parents, a broad spectrum. So that if you ask me to give you an answer, I'll quickly hold your hand and take you to Article 10, public participation. Well, we'll throw that question to the public, to the intersex community, you can hear they're here with us, to the families, to the church, to the mosque, legislator, and ask us to have that conversation so that then ultimately we can settle at an age that is appropriate, an age that is right, that connects with the best interest of the child principle. Where is Arem? Arem is in Kitui with his mother. If you want to pay him a visit, he's available. Moving on with life, enjoying his liberty, space like the rest of us. What about baby A? Baby A is in school. Baby A is learning. Baby A is growing, bigger, enjoying the space and rejoicing more that, they have, that the baby has learned that the Children Act has come, that the lawmaker finally listened to her little tiny voice of change. What's your role like Joy said? Let's propel the agenda forward. The unborn intersex child, posterity must come into a space that is better than we found it. You have the key. Awareness creation, acceptance, accommodation of the intersex persons. So that when we talk of the age, connecting with the next question, when we were before the judge, Justice Lenaola with Baby A, we had a raft of conflicting principles. And we were telling the judge, to give us an answer, to stabilize. We are first of all saying, parents have the parental responsibility over the child. And we got caution from Gillick versus Gillick. We were then telling the judge that the child has the right to their bodily integrity and, and autonomy. We were then telling the judge number three that the child must consent to what is being done was to be done onto their body. And we were telling the judge to generate that which then connects with what is known as an informed consent that will enable the doctors, if and only when need be, to conduct the surgeries within the best interest of the child threshold. Respecting the child's age, respecting the child's dignity and bodily autonomy, respecting the parental space, respecting all those parameters. So then the children later on don't sue the parents, don't sue the state, telling the state, telling the parents and the doctors to give them back that which they took away when they were young. I don't know how that would look like. Thank you very much. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going through the comments and um, a lot of people are appreciating um, the content, the learnings. We have Jennifer Wangari, who's a child protection officer, Zafida Shege, and Cliff, Cliff uh, I think uh, Cliff Oduk, Oduk, Asantini Sana, 
There is a comment from Kedogo Pauline who says, uh, thank you, Senior Council, for this enlightening um, session. The National Steering Committee on the Children Act is working towards developing a plan for implementation of the act. Uh, awareness raising, sorry, let me say that again. The National Steering Committee on the Children Act is working towards developing a plan of, for implementation of the act. Awareness raising, capacity building, and community engagements are among other activities being considered. This will take concerted effort by all duty bearers and other stakeholders. Another key issue uh, is to appreciate that rules and regulations to support implementation of the act is key, and this process is also underway. Other opportunities will arise for development of SOPs, guidelines, or tools to further support implementation. So um, those are some of the comments that are coming in. And please add a question, uh, other than appreciating uh, the presentation from you, Senior. He asks, are there steps being taken to incorporate intersex adults in the marriage act? Are there any steps being taken to incorporate inter intersex adults in the marriage act? Um, I haven't heard of that. Um, I've been posting, like I earlier mentioned, in my social media platforms, poking and inviting that conversation. But I believe that now that we are seeing what we are seeing in the children art, there's a huge likelihood, even in a miscellaneous amendment, for a change to promote Article 10 um, inclusion and to propel Article 45 towards um, uh, creating room uh, that will allow the intersex persons to fit into those spaces. But for marriage, um, we tried that conversation with RM because we were saying, yes, they are customary marriages, but uh, that didn't go far. In my book, Intersex Persons and the Law, I have tried to ventilate that conversation. If you're interested, you can get a hold of the book. Uh, in Parliament, I am not too sure. And the, the biggest problem like we had in RM's uh, time was because uh, there was fear that this might open up um, a can of worms, a Pandora's box, which will then uh, have their conversation in the other sexual minority rights spaces. So probably it's a question of time. Uh, we might then end up with that conversation on the table. Uh, the judiciary has uh, woken up. It's uh, speaking the trans, uh, the trans rights, you know, the Audrey two cases. Uh, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Enjoy. It will be a crime if you don't allow one lady known as one person known as Kimberly to say hi to us. A very very instrumental person. Please, I beg you, even if it's donating all my time that is left. Kindly, Kimberly. Zils, I can never pronounce uh, your second uh, name. Zils Zieselman. Oh, hello. Yes, Kimberly Zieselman. Thank you. I'm I'm even honored to be mentioned. Um, you know, Attorney Shigeta, your your work is so inspirational to me. And as uh, Saifa said, to many of us around the globe who are working for intersex children's rights. Um, I am so heartened about the leading role that Kenya is taking, not only on the continent, but in, in the world. And we look to you and to the many intersex activists on the ground who have been fighting for years and suffered along the way, I know. Um, we look to you for guidance and inspiration. Um, really, I appreciate your, your work. Um, I um just humbled by really all the work that's that's happening uh in Kenya and and around the continent generally i think good things are 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 coming in africa for intersex children outside of kenya as well um and just thank you from the bottom of my heart for your leadership as an intersex person uh who was once an intersex child um fighting for the rights of other intersex children now just thank you Thank you, I have nothing useful to add, Joy. Time is not on our side. Thank you very much for the opportunity and the privilege to be here today.
Um, thank you so much uh, for our participants. Thank you so much, Senior Chiquiti. I have learned so much. I can't wait to sit down now, this and open a book, just taking note of the several sections of the law that have been cited. And a special shout out. I mean, my heart goes out to Margaret, Ains, and Marcy, Monica, who have identified themselves on our chat box as uh, from the intersex community. Uh, it's really, it's really awesome to have you here. Other than just speaking about the intersex persons that you've never come across or you just hear about, I mean, the one thirty-seven of us, one thirty-five of us, and those who are streaming live on our Facebook and our um, YouTube channels, at least have had that interaction. So we'll be speaking about people, people that you've seen, stories that you've had and witnessed. So this is a beautiful cause. I'd like to echo the words of uh, Rosalind Kabata on the chat says that we'd like to pass her gratitude to Senior Council Fiji for all the great work uh, done and believing in the cause that most of us never understood actually until it was brought to light. So as we wind up, I know there's some, there could be some more questions. Kindly engage us through our social media pages and we'll be sure to address your questions. So before I let you go, Senior, kindly let us know how and where we can buy the book. Intersex persons and the law. How can we get hold of this book? Thank you very much. Um, if you reach out to me, I would be able to give you guidance. We um, are doing a door to door kind of distribution. So I will allow you to post my number there at my own risk. And you will appreciate that the book goes for Kenya shillings 2000. Out of every 2000 shillings, 100 bob, 100 shillings goes towards educating uh, intersex children somewhere within our nice republic, Kenya. Thank you. Um, thank Zero, you. Seven, one, four. Mm -hmm. Five seven four 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 four. I repeat zero seven one four five seven four 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 four. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. There you have it zero seven one four five seven four 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 four. I have it on the chat box in case you lose out on that. You can always reach out to um, us again through the pages through the number. Contact me um, as Joy. I'll definitely link you up to the same. So as we come to the end of our session, I'd like to say a big thank you to you, Senior Kikiti, for the beautiful session that we had, full of learnings. And again, I'll say learning and learning and relearning. A lot of emphasis on how we should be intentional in our programs, in our activities, in everything that we do, just to incorporate and to think about as a child in mind and at heart, because these are the people that we are working with, they're the people we worship with. The, I mean, they surround us. Numbers do not lie. You saw it, you heard it uh, during the last census. Numbers were taken down. So this means they live within us. You've seen them, they've come, they've spoken to you. I don't know what more condition we need to be able to appreciate the fact that we have to be. Um, the vessels that uh, the vessels that will be used to reach out to the masses. So for me and the branch, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who took their time from one uh, one thirty to this um, point, um, just listening in, learning, asking questions. Uh, I do not take it for granted. So this has been a series. We still look forward to other webinars where we're going to be learning about various aspects of the law, not just on children, but various as, uh, aspects of the law. So that brings us to the end of our day. Asante Nisana, keep warm if you're in Nairobi. Stay safe. COVID is still around. Asante Nakwahiri. You can turn on your camera and wave so that I just don't know I was speaking alone. You know, we're living in a very different era. It was sensitive to wave and say, hi, no one will unmute you, but it will be nice in your faces. Oh, thank you. Nice. That's beautiful. Have yourself a warm afternoon, evening, round, morning, evening.
Bye. You want to stay longer? <laughs>